Today we're going to talk about drones. And I know you're thinking, Jeff, what does that have to do with gold mining and prospecting? Well, actually it has a lot to do with it because as technology evolves and gets more advanced, so do the tools that us as prospectors have at our disposal to find those hidden load deposits or placer deposits. Now, of course, I already made a video about this last week. And if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to leave a link right here. Go ahead and watch it and that'll give you the background to what we're going to be talking about today. So today I'm going to talk about drones, my favorite drones, and of course the drone that we just recently got that we're going to be using on some of our upcoming videos. Now, in case you didn't know, I like flying the DJI Air. Of course, they have the Air 2 and the Air 2S, which are fantastic drones, and they have a lot of capability. But well, this is an older drone that we bought years ago, and it served our purpose pretty well. I'm going to show you what drone we just recently got, and I'm going to tell you the advantages of having it for using for prospecting and all the additional add-ons and accessories that you can get with it if you use it as a platform. Now, the downside to using some of the older drones is they use these old controllers i'm sure you've seen these before and of course the problem is is you got to use your cell phone with them as a screen and because of that you have to minimize the time that you have on your cell phone if you get emergency calls that cuts in battery life is low all these different variables involved with using this but with the newer drones they have what's called a smart controller rc controller and that looks like this these are fantastic because they have the screen built in so you don't have to compromise your cell phone and of course the clarity on this is better and of course the screen obviously is much larger than my iphone now DJI makes two of these. This is a standard controller, RC model, and then they make also a smart controller. The difference is about $500. But if you're really into this and you want the best equipment, I definitely step up and pay the additional money to get the better controller. But if not, these work just fine. Now the drone that we picked up is this big old honker monker right here. This is a Mavic 3 Classic in the Mavic 3 series. I love this drone for a whole lot of reasons and I highly recommend it to any of you guys out there who plan on doing any prospecting using a drone. And like I said, drones are very advantageous for getting out into areas that you can't normally get to or if you're it's incorporating lidar or thermal imaging you can get out there and see things that other people can't see or you can locate or find hidden things that you wouldn't normally see with standard vision and i'm going to get into that in just a second they make three consumer-based drones they make the mavic 3 they make the mavic 3 classic and they make the mavic 3 pro they also make what's called a mavic 3 cine but unless you're going to be doing professional photography for a client or a company i wouldn't recommend it they're extremely expensive but but they do deliver on their image quality. So why am I so gaga about this? This thing has all the different features in it that you look for when you want to do any kind of drone work. And when I say that in a prospecting world, I mean when you want to get out and see things at a distant range, you want best clarity, you want to be able to zoom in to see what your target is, you want to get down low, and you want to see what's on the ground. These things are fantastic. And the nice thing is, is in the old days, they had these little tiny batteries that would give you maybe 20 minutes of time. These batteries boast a 43 minute flight time. That right there in itself is fantastic. Now the next step up on this guy is the Enterprise series. It still uses the same platform, but it's mostly used for search and rescue, mining operations for survey companies, things of this nature. The nice thing is it's affordable. Even the high end Enterprise units are only $5,000. And if you compare that with other drones out on the market, that is a drop in the bucket as far as cost. An optional RTK module unlocks centimeter level positioning through microsecond signal sync, enabling surveying of a two square kilometer area in a single flight, all without the need for ground control points. DJI Mavic 3T integrates a wide angle camera and a thermal camera in its compact gimbal module, clearly detect and inspect thermal sources and work at night without worry. Double efficiency by scaling both thermal and vision cameras at the same time. Now the reason why I'm telling you all this is because if this thing can do what I think it can do and it can prove itself out in the field, then we want to step up to the Enterprise series, which is of course the Maverick 3T. And the T stands for thermal. The nice thing about using a thermal camera, besides trying to find out where there's wildfires like in Canada, is that you can find hot spots or cold spots. And what I mean by that is, is if you're in Australia and you're looking for the proverbial sun baker, the five ounce sun baker, this guy will find it because the gold will be extremely hot from the sun and this will see the thermal signature that it creates so you'll be able to get down low and scan with it and on the other side of the spectrum is if you're looking for any kind of cave systems this will detect cold air spots based against the background thermal signature of the heated rock now the other enterprise units incorporate what's called an rdk it's used for tracking surveying mapping and you can incorporate that with lidar you see where i'm going with this so we can start using it as a platform to use lidar out in the field so we can find spots that you couldn't find normally i mean you could fly it over into places like superstition mountains or up in utah 
around the Uinta Mountains, if you catch my drift, this thing will be able to see through all that vegetation and get to show you the contours of the land. Now, like I said, it is a step up, but if this thing proves itself, that's definitely the direction we're going. Now, another cool feature that they just came out with on the Mavic 3 series is that you can use the goggles that you use on the FPV drones and the controller too on this thing. For all you guys out there that don't know what an FPV is, it looks like this. FPV, which stands for first person viewing, serves up an incredible real time experience and the perspective has several big advantages. You get more precision, which is crucial for racing drones and a cinematographic perspective that you don't get from the ground. Photographers and videographers take advantage of the FPV's immersive, exciting experience, capture shots they'd never be able to get from terra firma. Other enthusiasts use the maneuverability machines for drone racing and hobbyists use FPV hardware for freestyle flying. The first person viewing makes it easy to perform stunts and zoom through tricky environments just like you see in national drone races on TV. Just think what you could do using those goggles and a Smart 2 controller with one of these. You can get this thing really low to the ground and you can see things on a first person basis. You'll be right up on the action and it's a lot clearer than using one of these controllers. And speaking of controllers, one of the things I don't like about these older controllers that they don't tell you about is that the sticks don't work after a certain amount of time, all right? You're probably gonna see that on some of your forums for DSGI fans, but I noticed over a period of time, not more than a couple months, is that the signature values on these sticks starts to decrease. So if you're supposed to have 100% side to side, forward and back, it starts to go down further and further to the point where you can't even control your drone anymore. We went online and we looked at all the videos that they had and come to find out out, there is a fix for it but you got to tear your controller apart so we tried to do that so we could get to these little access gimbals in here and guess what that's right because everything's so delicate made out of plastic it broke so we had to go online and buy another controller which we weren't too thrilled about this one's working fine but the last time we were out in the field i noticed that the right controller is starting to do the same thing and yes i've already gone through recalibration on these controllers and it works to a certain degree but i noticed it's starting to get right back into the old problems that we were experiencing with the original controller so that's why I'm really excited to use this new RC controller to see what it can and can't do. And then eventually we would like to step up to an FPV just for that added experience. Now, mind you, I'm no expert at drones. I'll be the first to tell you that. This is a whole new field for me and the technology is evolving so quickly. We're barely holding on just to learn what we can. So if any of y'all out there have got expertise or tips, tricks or suggestions gladly welcome them because i want to be able to become proficient at this so that i can get you guys in on the action and so that we can get out there and we can find new areas to prospect because when it comes right down to it the people who stay on top of the technology are going to be at the forefront of the prospecting field now i know there's a lot of hype out there right now about the u.s trying to ban dgi products from the united states but i don't think it's going to go through because a we get a lot of our products made in china and b last time we had issues with china flying their drones over the top of the U.S. We didn't really seem to care much, now did we? And what I think it all comes down to is competition, which is money. And that just means that these consumer drones are getting so good and so popular that it actually has an impact on other drone companies that might even be involved with military applications. So I think that's what it all comes down to personally. But maybe you know something about it that I don't. And I sure would like to hear it since we're going to be getting involved with these things. So you go ahead and leave me a comment down below and spread some of that info around so we can all become educated. Now we're so excited about the use of drones in the prospecting and mining industry that we're going to be giving them away. And if you're interested in finding out how to get one, just click this link right here and sign up as a premium patron. Not only are we going to be giving away drones, but we give away all the gold we mine out, the hard rock specimen gold. You can chat with me live. And of course, you qualify to come out on our three-day gold mining tours, which are placer. And we're trying to get that hard rock started up so you guys can get the full experience. Now on a side note, there's some really interesting things that have been going on here in the Southern Nevada area and Arizona. One of them is after all the monsoon rains, we've had some really strange prehistoric creatures washing up out of the mud. If you haven't seen it, it looks something like this. Hey, you guys have fish in the in the ball court and we're like, what? Park ranger Kathy Cooksey says that's because this, an ancient Native American ball court at Wapatki National Monument north of Flagstaff, never has any water in it. There were no fish. These guys are teeny tiny. Instead, there were these things but there you can see some of its legs in there. They're called triops, tiny crab looking things. If the pond lasts long enough, they can live up to 90 days. The pond did not last that long. They died in a few days, but hopefully long enough to pass on a new generation of triops. And their eggs can stay underground for years, if not decades, just waiting for the next storm to hatch. 
Then they hatch, grow, hopefully lay more eggs, and die all over again. It's just another example of long evolution. And they've been doing it over and over for longer than humans have existed. They are known as ancient fossils because they haven't changed at all. <laughs> About 100 miles away are the ancestors of the triops and a lot of other animals. The petrified forest near Holbrook had little creatures like this millions of years ago, but they also had things that were much, much bigger. Sometimes, you know, when you're dealing with dinosaurs and all the rest of it, the more things change, the more they stay the same, too. That's right. Dinosaurs are hidden in the high desert, hundreds of kinds. So many, they don't even know what they have here. These guys had a hook at the end of theirs for doing something. We don't know what. The rest of it, who knows? This one, a prehistoric crocodile relative. And this bone, they don't know what it comes from, but it's older than anything you've ever seen. It's the earliest known dinosaur fossil in North America. It's mind boggling how old things are out here. And the Triops, or something a lot like it, was probably there to see it. And if that wasn't strange enough, we've even had UFO sightings in Las Vegas. And even Metro has seen it. It looks like this. Southern Nevada is abuzz tonight with stories about the crash of an unknown object and the alleged sighting of strange creatures in the backyard of a Northwest Valley home. As you know, this is not our first UFO rodeo. We first heard about the incident in early May via the Metro Police grapevine. The incident has a lot in common with other bizarre cases from around the world. An alleged crash, strange beings, and bits and pieces that don't make sense. But the police took this seriously, and so do we. Just before midnight on April 30th, sky watchers across several western states saw a bright fireball streak through the heavens. A police officer working in the Northwest Valley caught a glimpse of the colorful object on his body cam. At nearly the same time, a ring camera in the area recorded a strange noise and what sounds like a crash. One family living in a ranch-style home had a much closer view of the object. Two brothers and their father were working on a vehicle in their yard when they caught a glimpse of a sparkly object as it came crashing down, then were hit by what they describe as a shockwave. One of the witnesses, a young man named Angel, has stated when the brothers looked into the yard where the object landed, that spot was obscured and blurry, as if by unknown form of camouflage. What they saw next prompted a frantic call to 911. So there's two people or two subjects that are in your backyard? Correct, and they're very large. They're okay. like eight foot, nine feet, ten foot, I don't know. They're, they, look like, they look like aliens to us. Big eyes, they have big eyes, okay. like, like I can't explain it, and big mouth. They're shiny eyes, and, and they're not human. They're 100% they're not human. Angel says they heard the patter of multiple feet in the yard. They later heard footsteps on their roof. They saw one of the eight-foot-tall creatures climb behind the controls of a large front loader stored in the yard as if trying to engage it. He got a good look at one of the creatures, he said, a greenish-grayish being with large eyes and long legs. He says he could hear its deep breaths, and when he locked eyes, he was, in essence, frozen in place, couldn't move. In the middle of the yard, where the object had crashed, then vanished, a circular impression was left in the soil. Okay, where is this on your property? Metro sources say the police dispatcher initially wondered whether to send a crisis intervention team to help the troubled witness, but then took the incident seriously. Two officers arrived 38 minutes after the call, and by then it heard from other officers. They proceeded cautiously and managed some nervous laughs. I ain't dealing with that. <laughs> a few days later, the family says, two Metro sergeants returned to the scene to ask follow-up questions. The family says they also saw men in suits and sunglasses driving in a car with government plates cruising slowly past the house in the following days. Nellis and Creech have denied any interest or involvement with the incident. Metro has indicated they believe the family that something crashed in their yard. But what? How would you like to be the 911 operator and get that call? I'm sure she was having a lot of fun with him. But they weren't having fun when they showed up, did they? Now, I know this is a short video, but if you enjoyed the topics and if you got any value out of it, go ahead and smash that like button. Smash it hard. And if you're interested in geology and how you can use it to find your own gold, go ahead and watch this video right here. And of course, if you want to get involved as a premium patron, click right here. And I'll see you on the next video.